What's up, people? Joe Winko here, your favorite Hawaiian guy. And here's my next episode of Joe Winko Talk. So in this episode, I'm going to be talking about something a little bit more serious than what I usually talk about in my my than the rest of the episodes I post on Joe Winko Talk. So I was on YouTube, and you know how they have um, you know how they have like suggested videos, like based off the stuff you usually watch on YouTube. So, it may not seem like it, but I watch a lot of crime investigation shows, like 48 hours, and this is going to sound absolutely crazy, but a lot of my horror videos I post on YouTube, like Knifed, a lot of that was inspired by, yeah, it was inspired by Scream, but some of it was inspired by stuff i seen on 48 Hours of Hard Evidence, and uh, especially in my most recent film, Body Count House, that's definitely inspired by something I've seen on 48 Hours of Hard Evidence, and there's... Kind of somewhat based on a true story, but not exactly. But, um, this one video I found on, uh, this one video I found in the suggestions on YouTube, it was an episode of this one show called Vanished, and it's about these people who go missing, but they never been found at all. Well, I, I'm not sure if any of them have, if any of the people on the show have ever been found, because i only seen one episode. But the episode I'm going to be talking about is, um, a one woman who went missing, her name was Jody Hewson Trude, and she, she disappeared back in June of 1995, like, oh, around the time I was born, but she disappeared around June of 1995, and she was, um, she wasn't like an everyday woman, she was a news reporter who worked, who worked as a news reporter in this town, and she vanished... Vanished in June of 1995, and it's one of the largest... She, it was in Iowa, and it, according to the according to the video, it says that it was one of the largest manhunts in Iowa, in Iowa history, and the police think that she was abducted because she disappeared from her apartment, and she was, like, she didn't show up for, for work one day, so that, but she was always at work on time, and, uh... Her co-workers at the news broadcasting station, they got really worried about her, so they waited for like another hour and she didn't show up, and they called 911 right away, and then they went to her apartment to investigate, and they think she was abducted because she left her house, her house was all locked, but when they went out to her car, her car was still there, but the key inside the car was bent, but it was still in, in the keyhole in the car. So they think someone must have snatched her while she was, uh, while she was trying to get, trying to go to work, and that she was fighting and trying to get away. But, uh, it's really, it was really creepy, because the documentary, I'll have a link to it in the video, it's 42 minutes long. They were talking about, it could, they don't know who it was, because it's unsolved, and it happened 18, almost 19 years ago. And, uh... They said that she was always all over the news and all on the TV, and that when people watch you on TV, they become kind of obsessed with you because they always see you and always hear you talk, and they think you belong to them. And this is going to make me seem extremely narcissistic, but it kind of freaked me out a little bit because I thought of my episodes of Joe Winko talk, like some psycho person's watching them and everything and makes a plan to kidnap track me down and murder me. But Joe Winko Talk doesn't even get that many views anyway, so I'm not really worried. But uh, still, it's it was it really creeped me out. But it made me think of Body Count House more, like how Adam was stalking Johanna. And yeah, I can't really think of anything else to say about that. I'll have a link to it in the description, and they don't think she's alive anymore. But I, I hope. There, there's a chance that she might be. I hope she's alright. Even though it's been, like, almost 20 years. Something. Something. I hope they fa find out something. But, uh... Speaking of mis missing people and news reporters... Check this out. This news reporter guy... He got fired for saying something really disgusting about, uh... About a missing girl on the news. And, like... It was a mis- it was a mistake, um, it was a mistake in the editing, like, they forgot to edit this part out. I don't know if it was a mistake in the editing or the recording, but he was fired 
But yet they broadcasted this on the news. And let me read the description. All right, fired for saying. Okay, so I'll play it right now. I have the video. It's really vulgar, and I think he deserved to get fired for it. All right, check it out. Oh, I don't care if she's 20. Hell, I'd fuck her. You can't say you wouldn't fuck her. Maybe that's what I'll do when they find her. I'll, I'll go and fuck her. Fuck her right in a pussy. All right, well, we definitely apologize for that editing error in that story. We are going to switch gears now to the prospect of peace talk. That is sick. They It didn't say which, uh... It didn't say which... Which, um... Wo missing woman it was, or who the missing woman was, but that was absolutely disgusting, what he said. And, you know, I'm really glad they did actually fire him, because they shouldn't have sick people like that working in the news. Because if a girl's missing, her family's worried about her, where she is, and he's talking saying all that about her on camera, in front of the camera. But, you know, I still can't believe they posted put that on the news, because I always thought when they did the news, they, like, record it, edit it, edit it first, then upload it on air. But, I guess, yeah, I guess I don't know much about the news at all. But, um, anyhow... There's this one song that's been out for a long time. For those of you who don't know, I really don't like um, vulgar rap songs at all. That's basically what this is. It's But this song is called Talk Dirty To Me by Jason DiRillo. And I first heard this song one morning. We had the radio on. And I went downstairs to eat breakfast. I got a bowl of cereal. Then, this song started playing on the radio, and this guy basically raps in the most disgustingest way how he has sex with all these women, and how he travels all the, around the world having sex with these women. And don't even, don't even get me started on the rap solo. That, that was absolutely disgusting. And I'm just sitting there, trying to eat my cereal, but once the song kicks in and I hear all of it, I, I immediately lost my appetite. But, there was one part of the song that I actually really liked. It's the... It's this... They have this awesome saxophone. This, like, Arabian saxophone solo to it. And, uh... I'll play it right now. It plays within every chorus of the song. Or chorus of the song. Alright, let me get it started. I love this part. <laughs> It's Ablar English. That's the most awesome part of the song. Without that saxophone, the song would be awful, but that that saxophone does it. Yeah, but uh, I actually have that on my iPod. Um, Talk Dirty to Me by Jason DiRillo. It's the only vulgar song I have on my iPod, but um, I have like one version of it on my iPod that's just the saxophone. So I went into 
those of you who don't know, I use the program Audacity a lot. It's a sound editing program. I trimmed off all the song except for the saxophone part, and I just have that on, like, loop play over and over again, and I listen to that all the time. Let me play it again. Let me try to find it. Talk dirty to me. Talk dirty to me. That is so awesome. Talk dirty to me. That song itself makes me want to so go to. That song itself makes me want to sign up for lessons on how to play the saxophone. That, that it's a yeah, it sounds like it's a, an Arabic sa Arabian or Arabic saxophone, but that's the coolest part of the song. And yeah, that's it for that. Uh, I probably won't have a link to that in the description though, but you can find it yourself. Um, so uh, getting back to my YouTube channel, thanks so much for thanks so much for. Uh, 1,000 subscribers. I was so hyped when I finally reached that. And, uh, also, thanks so much for my 636 likes on my Facebook fan page. But that's not enough. I need more. So make sure to like my fan page. And, oh my gosh, someone just blew up my fan page with 14 notifications. Oh, but I don't care. I like that anyway. So... Make sure to like my fan page on Facebook. I have the link to it in the description. My movie, Friday the 13th, it's actually coming along a lot quicker than I thought it would, but I really don't want to post it on YouTube till June 13th of this year, of this year, because I want it to be released on Friday the 13th. I talked about this before, didn't I? Yeah. So, uh, and also the custom animations are coming along really cool, too. They're not really go turning exactly as good as I thought they would. I figured out how to get the blood on the Sims and blood on the clothes, but it, lo it all looks better in the Sims 2. But the custom animations, like, I don't know how to make those for the Sims 2, so... Yeah, they're better in the Sims 3. Plus, I can't really get a good hockey mask for Jason to wear in the Sims 2. But, yeah, so be on the lookout for it. And, um... So, don't forget to comment. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like this video and share your thoughts. And out of all things, do not forget to like my fan page on Facebook. Or else I'll get you. I'm serious, people. So that's it. So peace out, people.